Hey there, this is Jacob from RoboFlow. I'm recording this video to talk about Microsoft Research's new Florence model, which promises to be a new foundation for computer vision research. So in this video, we'll go through first what the background in AI research is for Florence, um, what is the research that occurred in the Florence paper, and then we'll speculate a little bit on what uh, this new line of research means for the field of computer vision at large. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So Florence is uh, Microsoft Research's new foundational model. Um, and in this paper, they set the state of the art across a wide variety of vision tasks. And um, this is kind of one of those papers where uh, you see uh, the field kind of take a uh, leap forward across a wide variety of things. And then because that's happening in uh, one dimension, you know, across many dimensions, you, you think, you know, well, if we kind of just keep building on this, then we can make sort of horizontal improvements across uh, computer vision modeling. So uh, when, when I talk about improvements here too, I want to I want to be sure to emphasize that these are accuracy improvements. Uh, papers like this one uh, have nothing to do with uh, uh, speed improvements necessarily in training. They, they maybe did some clever training optimizations to get the model trained, but it's not about fast training and it's not about fast inference. It's about more performance and showing that uh, new tasks are, are tractable. Um, and it, it especially from the sense of not having to fine tune a model. So we'll get a little bit more into in here into what the difference between uh, fine tuning and um, just like a, a, a zero shot prediction is, um, which is a really important part of this paper. Um, so basically uh, the background for Florence is that Computer vision has lacked a foundational model. So uh, this, this is in, in the sense that uh, a foundational model is one in which you can uh, pre-train over a large corpus of data, and then you can uh, kind of leverage uh, off it um, and, and take that learning that you had from the original training and, and leverage it to new tasks. So computer vision did this a little bit with um, the ImageNet data set and the Cocoa data set, but those are both labeled supervised data sets. Uh, which means that they are, um, it's not really like unsupervised learning where you're just running something like a language model across the entire web, which is what um, has been happening in NLP. So NLP has had foundational models for a long time. Uh, this started off uh, with Elmo um, and BERT, and especially BERT. BERT was kind of the real first, um, and, and is very analogous to Florence because BERT uh, is, is the first uh, transformer block that's kind of been uh, the, the architecture that's been sweeping through throughout all of AI research recently. Um, and so, yeah, so the, the NLP field had this, that this was working. There's things like this that uh, were showing promise, but then uh, Florence, um, or, or rather um, Computer Vision didn't have one until earlier this year uh, when OpenAI released Clip. And I'm, I'm gonna kind of make an analogy here that OpenAI Clip was a little bit like BERT, but it was also a little bit like word Defect um, in that uh, they didn't really take it that far into many tasks. They just kind of did it and said, um, now you have, have this base model that you can go out and try, try and do things. Um, whereas Florence actually goes through and, and does that rigorously. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get more into what Florence does, but let, let's dive into what Clip was first. So Clip um, is, uh, a model that OpenAI released to connect the semantic similarity between text and images. And um, we, we even claimed here, uh, Brad at RoboFlow claimed here that it was one of the most influential AI models of 2021. And that's because that this was uh, the first time that you could actually pre-train a computer vision model across a wide swath of, of data in an unsupervised fashion. And the wide swath here was 400 million imaged caption pairs. So that's obviously still, um, you know, light years uh, smaller than kind of the, the huge uh, web crawls that some of the big NLP models are doing, but it's it's getting there and it's scaling up and you can see that with more data, um, you could do this uh, in a bit bigger fashion. And um, so the way they trained it was by looking at, uh, in the pre-training procedure, there is a loss function based on whether uh, the algorithm can match which which image belongs to which caption. And so you can kind of try to get some convergence that way by throwing it incorrect captions and incorrect images um, so it can figure out how to match the two. And then this gives you a feature vector that you can use for search and you can use for zero shot classification and you can use for um, different other things. I'll link some 
uh, content about Clip below if you want to dive even further into Clip. Um, but so that that's kind of more or less the the summary on Clip is a, it's a general model. Um, and I, I guess I should spend a little time here now talking about the difference between uh, zero shot prediction and fine tuning. So zero shot prediction is where you just come to the model and you just simply try to make your inference. So like with Clip, you can just give it an image and you can give it an array of uh, possible classifications for that image and it can just do it right away. You don't have to do any training. You don't have to find a data set uh, to train with. And then there's few shot transfer where you can take, uh, there's a linear, well, first there's a linear probe where you can um, just kind of use the features and make a little uh, linear classifier on top of those features. Um, and that's kind of the next step up and then uh, classify from there. Or you can do a few shot transfer where you just have like a small data set and you just show it maybe like five images and you let it back backcrop through the entire network. So back through the whole clip network. Um, and so few shot is kind of the next step up. And then you can do a full training, um, which is what we usually do. And obviously what when we do a rope flow and what we help everybody do a rope flow, which is fine tune models. And we'll see that that's still, that is still the way to go. Um, but th new things, new things are happening. Um, so uh, now, so yeah, so let's get into um, Florence. Um, so Florence uh, set out to kind of do what Clip did with a pre-training procedure, but make a base that they could show worked uh, across different dimensions in computer vision. So they wanted to do things like course defined, so image classification and semantic segmentation. They want to do things across time, like uh, static images to uh, videos. Um, and then they want to do a cross modality. So like you could do RGB or RGB plus depth and like no matter what you're adding, um, you, you're still getting something that's a little more transferable. And um, so in terms of what that means for classes is they did zero shot image classification, um, image classification with that linear probe like I was talking to you about and then fine tuning. Um, and then they did other tasks like object detection and they did video action recognition, and they, they did a, a basically a ton of benchmarks, and I do recommend checking out the, the, the paper and for a little bit more detail on how they take that base block network and then leverage it for, um, for other tasks. So in the pre-training procedure, uh, it was pretty similar to CLIP um, in that it's lining up text and image captions, uh, but the loss function is a little bit different, and there's definitely some nuances in the paper in there if you want to check out um, a little bit more about that. But if you're going to try to replicate it yourself, you're probably going to have a hard time because it took 10 days across 512 NVIDIA A100 GPUs. Um, and they also had a ton of memory. Um, so that, uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that's, that's going to be extensive if you want to retrain it. Oh, and, and, and it's not open source, but we'll, we'll get into that spoiler too. Um, so the Florence benchmarks on RoboFlow Universe. So this is the part of the paper that we're most excited about at RoboFlow which is that Florence uh, is heavily benchmarked on RoboFlow datasets to show that the model can uh, generalize across uh, domains, which is something that we think uh, is uh, a very important part about what we've been working on at RoboFlow Universe, which is uh, gathering a big data set of, uh, trans uh, of tasks to show um, how object detection models can uh, be generalized. And the cool thing is they, they did this um, without uh, collaborating with us, but I'm really excited to be writing about it. Um, so you can see here they're taking uh, their model and they're trying to see how well it goes across a different array of tasks, like identifying potholes in a road, um, looking at parking lot uh, spaces, and um, maybe looking at pistols, or this is a blood cell detection data set. So just kind of how general can it be? And then they do zero shot and they do fine tuning. So they try to see kind of how much the, how well the model can perform on the task without even training it at all. And then they, they jump up and they do a five shot, which is a few shot. Um, and then they go to the full training and, and here's the eval. So the thing about this eval that I want to talk about is that it confirms two things. One, zero shot is a lot, lot worse than fine tuning on your data set. If you can fine tune on a data set that represents your task, you should do that. You shouldn't, you should never default to zero shot. You should only default to zero shot if you have no data set or if you're in some really extremely wide space um, that's going to take, uh, take a, um, you know, a, an insanely crazy amount of data collection uh, to span. Or maybe, maybe you have no chance of spanning it. Um, so that, that's thing number one. And then thing number two is that these general models do not do as well on domain-specific tasks that aren't 
maybe as well represented in their data set. Like the concept of a mi missing uh, parking space in the parking lot data set um, is probably kind of a tough one for the model to, to be able to grasp. So it struggles um, on it. Um, so and the more obscure your data set is, like if you imagine like machine parts, you're going to totally need to train and fine tune the model into that space because it's not going to have exposure to it. Um, and uh, yeah, so moving on. Is Florence open source? It is not right now. So I recommend checking out Clip if you want to get started with a model like this. And I'll drop some links below um, and, and we'll see what happens. But the, the thing about this paper is that it is going to happen, um, whether it's Microsoft releases this or OpenAI does something similar. Um, there will be a Florence-esque uh, model to follow that's open source that we'll all be using. So stay tuned for that video too. Um, and you can always subscribe for stuff like that because I'm going to keep talking about this stuff. Um, and yeah, so I guess some parting thoughts. Will this have an impact in industry? Uh, so another dimension of this kind of model is no, it will not for real-time inference situations. That is still probably going to be dominated by small little like YOLO models um, that are optimized for edge inference. And uh, that's because that's what those researchers are focusing on. These researchers are focusing on maximizing performance and they're never going to help us whittle it down to us, but probably not into an edge scenario. Uh, for non real time inference, though, yes, like if you can use your inference on a cloud server and you want to get the best performance possible, these are going to be uh, the best place to look. Um, so stay tuned for more tutorials and more discussions like this. And uh, as always, Happy training, and uh, now you might not even need to train. You could just go ahead and uh, have some happy inferencing. So, see you in the next video.